Kevin Chaudhary. Once again, we will try to do some uh, uh, unusual problems of Simpsons, which may be asked sometimes. So this problem involves the rule number one and two together. Let's say if we have a bulkhead which has got five number of segments. That means the number of ordinates are one, two, three, four, five, six. And let us say each segment is of uh, 3.6 meters. This one is 4 meters. This is 7, 9, 11, 10, and this is 8 meters. We want to find out what is the area. And uh, this being the uh, bulkhead of, end bulkhead of the tank, probably the tank is filled up up to this level, right? Tank is filled up up to this level. It is required to find out what is the thrust on the tank. The water that is filled up here is 1.015. And let's say there uh, might be a sounding pipe of 3 meters, which is also full of water. So let us find out what is the thrust on the bulkhead. Where is the geometric centroid of the bulkhead? Right? Uh, in these kind of calculations, normally we uh, neglect the area of the sounding pipe, the transverse area of the sounding pipe is neglected. We will concentrate on the area of the tank. Now this uh, calculation cannot be done by rule number one or two alone. If it was only this part, I would have used rule number one. And if it was only this part, we would have used, I would have used rule number two. Let us anyway write down in the regular column y uh, writing from top, it is 4, 7, 9, leave some gap and if we divide the bulkhead in two areas, for example, uh, rule 1 taking care of area A and rule 2 taking care of area B, then area A ordinates are written as 4, 7, 9 and then 9 being the common uh, ordinate, in the lower part I will write 9. 11, 10, and 8. We follow a format like this. I want to uh, do a single table calculation. I don't want to complicate the calculation. Otherwise, I could have calculated this part separately, this part separately, and added the two uh, in the normal manner. That would take a lot of time. So what I've done is I have uh, uh, divided it in two parts, like area A and area B. Now, area A has got these three ordinates which will be worked by the Simpsons multiplier 1, 4, 1 and the area B which is the lower part will be worked by ordinates 1, 3 uh, sorry multipliers 1, 3, 3, 1 so lower part is worked with the multipliers 1, 3, 3, 1 usual product in the third column would be 4, 28, 41 then 9, 33, 30, and 8, the sum, 80. So I uh, like to write S1 here and sum 1 here. I have written S1 here and sum 1 here. Just to have the difference, just to differentiate the two. Now the fourth column, as usual, is the lever. Lever is X. Lever, as I said, is the distance of an ordinate from the first ordinate. So what I would do here, what I would suggest here is you write down the actual value of the lever, right? So the actual value of lever here is 0 and then uh, it is 3.6 here and then 7.2 meters here. It is 7.2 meters here and the distance from here to here is 10.8 from here to here the distance is 14.4 and then uh, from here to here the distance would be 18. Now the product uh, that is y x dx 0 28 into 3.6 gives me 100.8 9 into 7.2 64.8 the total is 165.6. So 9 into 7.2 is 64.8. 33 into 10.8 gives me 356.4. 14.4 into 30 
gives me 432 and 18 into 8 144. The total here will be 21997.2. The rest of the calculation should be very simple. That is the total area from first ordinate to the last ordinate should be h by 3 into 41 that is a sum over here plus 3h by 8 into 80. Let us uh, quickly go over the table once again. This was a situation where we had 6 ordinates and 5 segments. So we had to employ both the rules, rule number 1 and 2. We divided the area in two parts, that is area A and area B. And then area A is done in this part of the table, area B is done in this part of the table with slight independence. Like you have seen the format, how I have drawn the table. After writing the area A ordinates, I have given a gap. I would be doing the totaling uh, after that. Then I have tabulated area 2 ordinates also in the same table. So look at this 479, which I will be doing by rule number 1. 9 being the common ordinate, uh, comes here also. So 9, 11, 10, 8. I put 1, 4, 1 here, the Simpsons multipliers for rule number 1. And I put 1, 3, 3, 1. The Simpsons multipliers for rule number 2. Then sum of products, I write S1 here and S2 here, whereas uh, you must have seen I have written sum 1 here and sum 2 here, right? The only precaution which must be carefully taken in these kind of questions when I am combining uh, rule number 1 and 2, I write the actual uh, distance of the ordinate from the first ordinate, that is the, uh, the lever I might write 0, h, 2h, 2h, 3h, 4h, 5h, but uh, I may also write down the actual distance of the ordinate from the first ordinate. That is what I have written. Like in this particular case, I could have taken the lever directly from the water level, in which case I would have got the common centroid directly from the water level, but I don't want to do that. The only reason I don't want to take the lever directly from the water level is it will involve odd figures like here I could have written 0h, 2h, 2h, 3h, 4h and 5h. There in writing the actual distance from the water level I might make some clerical error. So I have preferred taking lever from the first ordinate only. And in the column number 5 you will see I have the product of column number 3 and 4. right? So the uh, sum of products here is 41, sum of products here is 165.6 sum of product for the rule number 2 here is 80 and 997.2 respectively. So you've seen total area which I have got is h by 3 into 41 plus 3 h by 8 into 80 that gives me 157.2 meter square and moment of total area about the first ordinate that is h by 3 into 165.6 that is over here plus 3h by 8 into 997.2 which is over here so there is 1.2 into 165.6 giving me 198.72 and let's look at the second part that is 997.2 divided by 8 equal to into uh, 10.8 that gives me 1346.22 uh, totaled with the earlier one 198.72 gives me 1544.94 so this is 1544.94 meter cube so if I want to find out the common centroid with respect to tank top or with respect to the first ordinate that would be 154 44.94 divided by 157.2 so that becomes uh, 157.2 9.828 that gives me 9.828 meters so 9.828 meters is the position of geometric centroid with respect to the first ordinate so what is the distance with respect to the water level? 
what is the distance of geometric centroid from the water level? So that becomes 13.828 meter. 13.828 meters. That is the position of geometric centroid. That is a common geometric centroid from the water level. Now we can find out what is the pressure at that point and we'll also find out what is the thrust on the bulkhead. So the density of the water is 1.015 tons per meter cube. So pressure will be 13.828 into 1.015 tons per meter square it gives me 14.035. 14.035 tons per meter square. If I multiply this with 9.81, the figure which I get is 137.69. 137.69, that would be kilo newton per meter square. Now, if I want to find out the thrust, then the thrust would be the area multiplied by the pressure at geometric centroid. Suppose I want to find out the thrust in terms of tons, then if this is the pressure at geometric centroid, that is 14.035 multiplied by area 157.2 gives me 2206.3 tons. 2206.3 tons is the thrust on the bulkhead. In case I want to find out what is the thrust in terms of kilonewtons, then what I can do is 2206.3 into 9.81 giving me 21643 21643.8 kilo newton because of the column of water in the sounding pipe or because of the water head in the sounding pipe as they say sometimes the pressure at geometric centroid is increased so whether it is a thin column of water or it might be entire width of the tank full of water. The pressure will increase in the similar way. So sounding pipe water head cannot be underestimated because it will create a lot of pressure. Particularly it is dangerous in the situations of pitching whereby, whereby the column of water will increase and decrease.